Hello folks and welcome back to Snow Runner, my own self-imposed hardcore mode. So hopefully I remembered to, in the video for YouTube, to put the rules that I'm following. And right now we are still on Black River. And I was doing some missions and uh, the trucks weren't handling as well as I would like. And I know they can do much better. So what I did was I went ahead over to Smithville Dam. And I drove up to here. There is a watchtower right here. So I opened up that watchtower. And there were three upgrades. So there's an upgrade right in this area. And there's also an upgrade here. And another upgrade that was here. Right in this area. I think it's actually right there. So I went over and I opened up that watchtower. I got those upgrades. And they were some upgrades I, were look I was looking for. And... One of the biggest ones was the uh, lift for the suspension lift for the Western Star, which you will notice I have put it back in black. And I just like it better. It has the really nice paint job. Uh, the blue, and that's okay. And I like it in black. Um, so I went ahead and went back to the black. That's what I'm used to. That's what I like. Uh, I also did the, let's go back to the map. I came over here and I did the food delivery because I was kind of close to, uh, jumping up rankings. So I went over here, I did the food delivery, which is basically just coming down here with the food and coming through here and delivering it to here and that gives you some really good points and xp uh, driver experience and what i did was take the uh, fleet star over to here and i parked it and took the western star put a flatbed on it drove it over here the fleet star loaded it up and then i hit the food delivery and made my delivery and had no issues whatsoever with the uh, Western Star making that delivery and did it fairly fast. So I may show you that uh, toward the end of this episode. It depends because we have a couple of missions that I want to take care of. And uh, I now have the mud tires, or not mud tires, but all-terrain tires on the Western Star. So it is almost fully upgraded. And I was able to get the tires for the Fleet Star. Still can't get the tires for this one until I move up to level 9. Went ahead and put the mud tires on here. Uh, and I did find the diff lock for it. So it's got the diff lock in it. And now I have the mud tires on the Chevy. So it will make it a much better vehicle for scouting. Can't really do a lot to this one. Um, and let's go ahead and retain it. Go to my truck store. Nope, that's the wrong one. I was looking at, when I first got on, uh, I wasn't planning on playing because I'm, I'm going to have to go to work here in a bit. But I was just going to watch some YouTube and notice that SnowRunner was downloading. So I thought, oh man, this could be the new, uh, new maps and new vehicles and stuff like that. And it's none of that. So I kind of got excited and then was let down a little bit. Uh, but I also raised this vehicle up. I did not put mud tires on it because mud tires just don't seem to work very good with this vehicle. Uh, these tires seem to work the best in this configuration. 
and for me anyway. And these tires are the 39 AS2s, uh, which I was running the 31 AS2s, but since I put the suspension lift on it, I went ahead up to 39s, and it makes the truck for me more stable. Putting the off-road tires or the mud tires on it uh, just doesn't do it for this truck. Uh, but again, that's my personal opinion. And uh, look at my phone, it buzzed. Nope. Nothing I need to take care of. So uh, I do have it upgraded to where my rolling fuel tank and repairs truck, because that's basically all I use this thing for is to drive it somewhere where I know I'm going to need fuel. Uh, it's up and running the best it can be, and it's not going to be doing a lot of mudding anyway. Uh, again, it's I'm just mainly use this truck for the gas cans on top and a little bit of repair points. But what we're going to do now is leave the garage. I have two missions that I haven't completed yet. Oh, and it's dark. Uh, the first one is the missing oil tank, which I'm going to send the uh, Fleet Star over to get that. And the, But the first one I'm going to do is we have this vehicle here. And it needs to be pulled out and delivered, and the, that mission is not even up here yet because I have not gone out there to the vehicle. But I will be doing that, and I want to try it with a big truck. I'd normally do it with the Scout, but it just takes forever for the Scout to pull this thing out. So I'm going to try it with the Western Star and see how the Western Star does with it. Let's get some lights on this situation. Yeah, this truck is buried so deep and in such a bad place that it just... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, stop the engine, I don't want to waste gas. But I just thought of something. We have the drainage mission. I'm going to start tracking that because there is a pump out here. And that's how you know, unless you do like I do and I scour the maps and take my time looking around to see if there's anything I missed. And I found some tankers that way that normally I would miss. And if you don't do that, the way that it introduces you to this truck here is you have to come out here and get a pump. So since I'm going to be heading out that way anyway, I can go ahead and take care of one of the pumps. And it's not a timed event, the pumps. You can do them in any order at any time. But I've been kind of holding off on this mission until I reached level 7 so that I could get the mud tires on here. Or the not mud tires, or the uh, off-road tires. And these are not the best or the most expensive off-road tires. There is a set that's more expensive than this. But what I found is that the more expensive ones aren't as good. Again, it could be just player preference. I've tested all three of the tires in this category. And these are the ones that I like the best. They fit my driving style better. The only thing I'm really missing on this truck now is the SnowRunner gears. phone's ringing, but uh, it's a scammer or telemarketer. I'm 
kind of hoping I'm taking a class at my job. This is supposed to be my day off. And uh, as I've said before, I'm an instructor. I teach people how to do their jobs, keep them current, and stuff like that for my agency. And there are times when the instructor needs to have instruction. And I'm doing a class on advanced presentation skills. I've been doing it for the last couple of days. And I was kind of hoping they would call me and say, eh, class is canceled today, unforeseen circumstances. Because I really don't want to go into it. But that does not seem to be the case yet. Alright, so I am going to go out here. Go ahead and get that. Pull on out here, and I know that I have to pull this truck back. Where it's sitting, actually it's sitting further up than it normally sits usually sits back to where the bumper is touching the mud and that's what makes it so difficult to get this truck out of here and maybe they have fixed that to make it easier ah, see that's the problem with this truck Alright, let's back it up. There we go. Come over here and accept it. And yeah, maybe that's why I couldn't get it going. So we'll try it now. See if I can get it backed up out of there. the same issue I had with scout vehicles is to get this truck moving takes so much effort there we go come up against that see if I can't move it now. Use that as leverage. There we go, so it is popped out now. See if I can get the Western Star out of here. Get it turned around. I have done this mission, this particular mission, four times. This well, this will be the fourth time. And each time, I think the fastest I've been able to pull this out once I've accepted them. So I'm hoping that using the Western Star here will make this process a lot easier. And reduce the wheel spin a little bit. So far it's taken much less time because it usually takes me 20 minutes or more just to get the vehicle to here. And I have to have the extended winch 
so that I could put the scout vehicle up against the uh, that pipe up there just to get leverage and even then it takes a lot to get it moving I think it might have even been easier if I could have got the locking differential. So getting it moving and getting it over to here was a huge challenge and then getting it through here has always been a challenge. Because even with the fully upgraded Oh yeah, this is so much easier. With a fully upgraded Chevy truck, uh, it just does not want to pull that truck out of here. And I have even tried coming in and fixing the GMC up so that it can help me out more. And that still doesn't help. So if you're going to do this mission, this truck or the Fleet Star may be the way to do it. It's definitely the way to do it. There are three vehicles that you have to get out of the mud and take to the farm. The other two vehicles, the Chevy has no problem whatsoever getting those vehicles and pulling them out. It's this one is always been a very tough one to do with a scout. I started to either do it with the what was it the Yar or uh, with the Navstar. But I got to thinking, no, not everybody is going to have the season pass. So I wanted to do it with a vehicle that I could actually get without the season pass. I haven't tried it with the Hummer or any of the Russian vehicles. For me, I just don't want to use vehicles that I can't get normally without paying and I also don't like the idea of jumping to all the maps opening them all up getting all the vehicles and then using things like the Russian vehicles on the oh, no, 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 no. Uh, using the Russian vehicles on the American maps I like to try to do it with the American vehicles. One thing I am going to do uh, when I finish my other playthrough, I am going to start a third one. And in that playthrough, I am going to try to do everything, including the Russian, with American vehicles. And then maybe even start another playthrough where I just jump straight off to Russia maps after I do the mandatory stuff here. And then start out in Russia, complete all of Russia, and then come back to Alaska and to here and do all of them with Russian vehicles, no American vehicles involved. So just a couple of different ways you can play the game. And I have watched other people that they go get all of the vehicles or they use the glitches to get uh, tons of money and buy all the vehicles and they use Russian vehicles for everything. And to me that kind of takes something away from the game. Which is why I can't wait till they actually come out with an actual hardcore mode. To see how hardcore it really is. And hopefully you won't be able to do stuff like that. 
I'm hoping part of the hardcore mode is like I do and you can't switch maps or regions until you complete the region you're in. Alright, so we got that one delivered. There is a drainage pump out here, but I'm going to take the Chevy out there to get that. So I'm actually starting to enjoy more and more the hardcore mode because it takes a lot of thought and planning to do the missions. Uh, I, when I did, went up to the watchtower. Uh, I went to the watchtower on the other map on uh, Smithville Dam. And the Chevy truck, I took it up there and it did not make it all the way up there to the watchtower and back to the garage in one tank of gas. So I ended up having to put the fuel tanks on the top. Uh, I had to take the, well, I took this out and refueled it and brought it back, put the fuel tanks on top and then I left this one up toward the top. Well, about halfway up to the top. And let me show you on the map because it's easier to do that. So I went all the way up here. I opened up this watchtower. And then I got back to about right here before I ran out of gas. So I brought the uh, International Scout up to here and filled it with gas. And then brought it over here. That way the Chevy could go over here and get these two upgrades. And then come back and refuel. And then come down here and get this upgrade. Come back and refuel. And then took them both back. Uh, because the Chevy can't make all of that on one tank of gas. But I've got a one thing that I reaffirmed. When you put that... Those fuel tanks on top of here, this truck does not run as good as it does without the fuel tanks. Uh, you can just see the back end of it squatting down, and it just, like I said, just doesn't run as well. So let's leave the garage, and I'm going to take the Navstar and see if the Navstar can pull out that tanker from where it's at. And remember, I'm still running regular highway tires on this truck. I don't... I think it is um, level 14 is when I can get actual all-terrain tires on here. Or it might be level... 14 is when I can get the off-road tires. But either way, that's I'm still a good way from that. But I love the ground clearance on this thing. That's a big help. And I'm still short the upgrade for uh, the suspension lift, which I'm assuming is either on Island Lake or Drummond Lake, Drummond Island. So I think I've already accepted this. Yep. So we'll start tracking it. Can't fill it up with gas or it's going to cost me. Mm -hmm. 
and I've been fooling around with paint jobs a little bit. Uh, the black was just too dark, so I went with the gray to see if it lightened it up a little more so I could s actually see the truck through the smoke. And I think it helps a little bit, but I think I'm going to go with a brighter color. So every time I play the game, this will probably be a different color until I can find the right color. So I'm going to come up here and cut through there. So any of the colors that I use, uh, let me know what you think about the colors. And if you have a particular color you think might go good with this vehicle, let me know. I'll give it a try. So I wanted to test this road to make sure this truck can make it through here. Because this will probably be the road that I pull the tanker through. So far it seems like it's doing okay. Excuse me there, but we're getting up toward the really muddy area, which is just up ahead. We don't need damage. So the tanker is right out there. So we'll see how this does in the deep mud. I wanted to use this one. Uh, because there are some areas that we're going to be going to shortly that are extremely muddy, like the Island Lake. And even though this has highway tires, I wanted to see how it would do in deep mud. Find out if this is a truck that I can take to Island Lake or if it's something that I have to wait until I get the upgraded tires. And I'm thinking I may have to wait to get the upgraded tires. Yeah, this may have been a mistake. But maybe not. It still is pulling. Just not very well. Okay, let's use a winch so I don't tear this ground up too much. Yeah, we'll go there.
over here in the box. Actually, I can probably back it up some more. And just hook up to it. Alright, let's see if it can pull the trailer out of here. Providing I put it in the right gear. has winch points on top, so you got to be careful about that. Yeah, these road tires do not help this truck out any. Luckily there are some down trees that will help me out. Slowly making progress. When I get the back wheels totally on the little road here. The road actually goes around. And back out that way. Like I said, this is a muddy mess through here. So it's not a road that you will want to use. It's a shorter way to get to the factory but not one you'll want to use if you don't have good tires. Alright, so it appears like we just might have this. <clears throat> and since this is a mission trailer, I cannot use any of the fuel out of it. So just a reminder about that rule. If I use any of the fuel out, it's going to cost me $3 a gallon, which so far, through this, I think is episode 10. And I'm nearing the completion of this map. Uh, I have not bought any fuel at a gas station. Yeah, we'll go this road. I thought about taking the other road. But I want to see how it handles with a load on this road.
Yeah, the class I'm taking is a fun class. I mean, it's interesting. I'm not really getting a lot out of it. Um, they have really good points. And for the classes that I create myself, I can use a lot of those points. And most of the classes that I teach are very structured classes. And you have to follow them point by point, page by page, exactly the way the government wants them taught. I can use some creativity in the classes. And I still have to keep with the syllabus. I can't deviate very much from it. And again, the class that I'm taking, though it is a fairly good class, and if I worked somewhere else and could deviate from the structured content more, uh, they've got a lot of good points that I could use. And it's still good information. I just can't apply it very much of it to the job I'm doing now. And it's put on by a, a contract company. And it's good intentions. And it's good information to know. As I said, I can't use a lot of it. So when they start talking about something that I know I can't use, I kind of start spacing off a little bit. Which I shouldn't be, but... And then I keep getting interrupted. Knocks on my door. I need help with this. I need help with that. Do you not see my door is shut? The phone is going. There's somebody talking on the phone. I'm a little bit busy. All right, so we have some time. And what I want to do is I want to show you how easy it is to do this mission over and over where I'm delivering the food. So I should have went ahead and set this up. I didn't think about it until I'd already started the video. This truck has really come to life since I put these tires on it. Yeah, she handles like a dream. Okay, put my, activate my anchors. Crane mode. And stop my engine, go back to my garage because I want to do it with the Western Star. customize it put the flatbed back on it I could do it with the oh this would uh, I can do a comparison to 
I could put the crane on this and do it with the crane, uh, but it's just much easier to do it this way. It's also much easier if you auto load. And I can't do it in this mode. I was sitting here thinking, you know, I could just do it this one time just to show you how easy this delivery is. And I thought, nope. Do it the way I'm supposed to. Go ahead and put it in all wheel drive. Okay, so comparison here. Uh, if you look at the bed, uh, maybe if I switch trucks, I can see it better. Okay, so if you look at the bed on the Fleet Star, and remember the three dots, you've got the three marker lights on the bed. That very center marker light, zoom in on it, is just past the rearmost drive wheel. And if you look at the Western Star, that is before the first drive wheel so it makes it much steadier now if I were to put the crane on here then that center marker light would be right in the middle of the two drive wheels so this the Western Star is actually a better truck to run with the crane and the flatbed the problem with it is if you have the crane and the flatbed on it you can't pull the trailer because the flatbed is too far back and you can't attach the trailer. Oh. So let's go into crane mode. And I'll pick that up. Lazy there. Come on, spin around. Get out of here and I don't know why it does that. That's aggravating. Uh, activate my anchors again. That one didn't go out as far, but that'll be okay. Should be good enough for this. Restore crane. Stop engine. Change trucks. And pack the cargo. So 
But remember, do not accept the mission until you're turned around. All right, so my best time is four minutes and two seconds. I have six minutes to make this delivery. It's worth thirty-seven hundred dollars and three hundred and forty XP or experience for the driver. Now, what you can do if you wanted to is back up, get the truck going, and then hit this really quick, or you can just start it. So you can do it like this to shave off half a second oh, shoot. hit the wrong button but you also have to be careful about the damage that's what the little black line is up top there with the red thing in front of it that measures your damage if you take too much damage then you fail the mission When I can, I stay on the grass because that's faster than going through the mud. Try to stay out of the rut, but so far every time it has sucked me down into the rut. Go around the tree a little bit. A little bit of damage. But that damage didn't even register up there, so I'm good. Try to avoid using the brakes. Just let off the gas, let it coast around the corners. That way it doesn't drop back down to first gear. That time I did. And you can watch this thing go over the bumps. There's a lot of the bumps. It'll hit the front and the back will hit simultaneously and it'll just bounce. The whole truck will bounce as one. So I think this truck is the best one to use for this mission. when you use the Fleet Star it has a shorter wheelbase so the front will bounce differently than the back and you can take damage but it was like this road was set up for specifically for this truck to make it smooth my turn. Uh, that's not good. So this time is going to be slower because I missed the turn. I was talking. And then do not go up the mud. Drive straight up the hill. After you cross the water, drive straight up the hill again. Because there is a little tippy area over here. 
right there to my left that could throw you over or at least slow you down but don't stay in the grass through here because there's two hidden stumps in here close to the trailer and then straight over this so I did it 20 seconds uh, slower than uh, my best time but uh, yeah that's a quick way that you can earn some extra money and uh, driver experience and you can keep doing this over and over now, if you're recovering back to the garage, then I could just recover to the garage, drive straight over to the farm, which isn't that far, auto load, and then be doing this again, and you could earn that much in probably uh, every seven or eight minutes. So again, that's a a good way to earn extra and to uh, get your money up in a relatively short amount of time but I have to drive back and I have to load everything by hand Now there is another uh, one of these that you can do when we get over to Smithfield Dam next time. I'm going to do that one. But it requires me to pull a trailer. And now that I've got mud tires on here, I can do it. But they have it set up. There are three timed events. And you can actually hit one of them and then go hit the next one and then hit the third one all in pretty rapid succession and that's what I would do probably in the next video uh, I'm not sure because I'm going to have to set up two vehicles with cranes in specific spots so I can load the cargo But I believe the last time I did it, it took me like 17 minutes or 18 minutes. But that was with auto load. And I was able to complete all three of those missions and get a lot of money and a lot of experience for the driver rating. So this self-imposed hardcore mode is really taking me more time. Whoa, shoot. Well, luckily I'm heading back to the garage. Does that hurt the motor? And I have to drive this sucker back because I'm not allowed to recover. Everything has to be driven back to the garage. So I'm trying to hurry back because I would like to do one other thing before the end of the video and to save a little bit of time let's go ahead and get the Fleet Star back and I want to put the crane 
on the Western Star to show you exactly what I was talking about. Why it's a better vehicle for the flatbed and the crane than the Fleet Star. Change trucks. And I'll just take them both back together. Garage is right up here. Which this in so I can see the front end. Yeah, I am gonna have to find these snow runner gears for both of these vehicles. It will make them both much better vehicles. One of the reasons why I love the Western Star so much is that it flat out flies through the swamp area on Smithfield Dam. That swamp area doesn't even slow this truck down when it's fully upgraded. Yeah, let's get over in the light. And release the winch. Go into the garage and we'll I'm going to add the crane. And we'll leave the garage. So the exact same setup and go ahead and stop the engine. So if you look at the Western Star, if you look at the crane, I mean uh, the flatbed on the back, the three lights, that center one indicates the center of the load. And right now, if I put a heavy load on here, the center of the load would be between the two rear drive wheels which makes it a much steadier thing. And when I hit bumps, it's not bringing the front end of the truck off the ground. But if you look at the Fleet Star, with the same setup, that center marker is actually just past the rear drive wheel, which means with a heavy load on there, if I'm going uphill and I hit a bump, or I'm trying to go fast and I'm hitting rocks and stuff, the front end will actually try to come off the ground and I don't have as good a steering. The problem with this is if you look at the tow hitch on the back of the Western Star, it is so far forward with both of these on it that this truck cannot pull a trailer. Uh, whereas the Fleet Star with that on there, it can still pull a trailer because the frame is longer. And I'm going to verify that. I'm pretty sure it can't. But I have been wrong before. It could be another truck I'm thinking of. So I can't pull any trailers when I have this configuration on. It's just too far back from the winch, or from the, uh, uh, the tow. But if I'm just carrying something that, you know, like uh, one steel or two woods, then this truck is a much better choice than the Fleet Star. But if I have to carry, you know, three or four cargo slots then that truck is much better but if it, with this truck if I need to carry something that's 
uh, three different things, then I can always put the uh, flatbed trailer on it, the semi-trailer. Alright, so I think that will do me for this episode. I'm going to have to get ready for work. And if you liked the video, leave a like. Uh, also leave me some comments on the YouTube part. And let me know what you thought. Is there something I can do to make this a little bit better? Uh, what did I do well? What did I not do well? And I will see you in the next episode of the self-imposed hardcore mode. And if you'd like to see the game played the regular way, uh, check out my other videos on YouTube. And I think I'm probably three quarters of the way done on the Russian maps, which I will get back to that one probably this evening. Uh, we had a little issue with losing some cargo that I've got to get a crane out there to put the cargo back on. And I will see you in the next episode. So until then, have a good one.